What's going on YouTube? Josh here checking in. Got my morning coffee. Just reviewed this research paper and we're going to talk about how high protein diets affect your health or don't affect your health for that matter. Okay, so the reality is, is like, you know, you've been around this for any amount of time. You know that there are people who will tell you that if you have a lot of protein in your diet, it's bad for you. It's going to be bad for your kidneys. You shouldn't mess around with that stuff, right? But there's a whole bunch of evidence that says high protein diets are really good for health. Um, specifically, if your goals are to put on muscle and maintain muscle mass, you need a higher than recommended daily uh, you know, allowance of protein per the government. If you were a guy my size, the government would have you having 60 or 70 grams of protein. And that's not going to cut it. So this study that I looked at is a year long study assessing high protein intakes. Now a year, you do not see that very often, okay guys? That's really, uh, you know, shout out to the authors. The head author was Jose Antonio, who's uh, affiliated with the International Society of Sports Nutrition. So shout out to Jose Antonio, because that's really awesome getting a year long study done. What they did is they took 14 subjects they did a randomized crossover trial. The same subject did a portion of normal, their normal protein intake, and a portion of a high protein intake, and then they kind of went back and forth to see if there were any changes within that same subject. That's a nice way of doing this when you have less subjects in the study, and they're basically acting as their own control. Right? So in this study, they used 14 resistance trained males. Okay, That means these guys were lifting for a fair amount of time. If I remember correctly, the average amount of time these guys had experienced lifting was nine years. Right? So these are not chunks that just started lifting yesterday. Do I think that makes a huge difference in the outcome of the study? Not really. You know, I think this could have been done on lay people. I don't really uh, think that it would make a huge difference if this was done, you know, in lay people or resistance trained folks. But it's worth noting, so you're aware of that when you, you know, talk about the study in the future. So what they did is they tracked um, the meal intakes via self-reporting. Okay, they used MyFitnessPal. Honestly, you know, in a year-long study, you're not going to really get much better than that. It's, you know, there are issues with that. Could the folks doing this study have been lying, uh, misreporting? Sure, they could have. But in a year-long study, you're not going to have them stay inside a research lab and get paid to lose an entire year of their life so that they can solve, you know, you could have researchers watching every single thing they eat. It's just not going to happen, all right? So that's a limitation that it's self-reported, but you're just not going to get any better than that. So the short of it is, in the normal protein intake for these guys, it was still actually what some authorities would consider high protein. You see, this is kind of the issue with this high protein, low protein stuff, and the authors of the study mentioned it, is that nobody really, what is high protein? You know, some people, uh, you know, say it's a percentage of your calories. The authors of this, of this study rightfully said that, you know, really it should be based on uh, grams per body weight. And I believe they used the cutoff of around two grams per kilogram as your sort of uh, standard cutoff, which is pretty close to one gram per pound body weight for those American listeners out there. Shout out to the USA. So anyway, in this study, let me just pull it up here. It looks like in their normal protein intake, meaning like whatever they would eat normally, but keep in mind these guys are resistance trained dudes. They're probably gym bros, probably eat a fair amount of protein at baseline. Their baseline was two and a half grams per kilogram, all right? So that comes out to like 1.1 grams of protein per pound body weight. And then when they went to the high protein group, they went over to 3.32 grams per kilogram, which is the same as basically one and a half grams per pound body weight. Now, what they were measuring in this study, which I haven't told you guys yet, is stuff that they don't typically measure. Normally in these studies, especially with resistance trained guys, they're measuring, they're only concerned about muscle mass, body fat, and did they get stronger? Basically, do you look better and did you get stronger? And that's not really the primary objective of this study. They were actually looking at measures of health, right? They're trying to put a nail in the coffin of that argument that high protein diets are just no good for you. They're going to mess up your kidneys, right? So what they did is throughout the course of this one year study, they took multiple measurements. 
not just of the standard stuff that we talk about, like you know, body measurements, their uh, fat, fat free mass, they assess their body fat using a bob pod, but they also, what they look at specifically are their blood tests. They did a comprehensive metabolic panel and they also did a blood lipid panel. So as a physician, I order the comprehensive metabolic panel all the time. The short of it is it basically includes um, your basic electrolytes, it includes your kidney function, and as well as some markers of uh, enzymes in your liver that would indicate if there's potentially damage caused to any of these organ systems, you would see something array, okay? Blood lipids, that's your standard stuff that you hear about, your cholesterol, your LDL, your HDL, the good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, all that kind of stuff, that's included in the lipid panel. Guess what guys? In the high protein group, they ate more calories, they did not get any fatter, okay, and their blood lipids and everything else was exactly the same. One thing that's really important to note about this study that I think, you know, you have to take with a grain of salt is that although the subjects were not told they need to get their additional protein when they're doing the high protein portion of the study, they weren't told they need to get it from any particular source, although they were provided with free protein powder and the subjects primarily got most of their protein from the high protein powder, okay? Now, the thing to, to keep in mind is that this doesn't completely change the results, okay? They're telling us that, but you have to remember that if you decide to say, uh, increase your protein intake substantially and you were to get it from sources that were basically not as clean of just protein, for example, if you were to say increase your calories by having a bunch of steaks that were an equal amount of fat and protein, I don't think you'd probably see the same results and I think you might even see changes in their blood levels, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna try and replicate this, try and you know have a really higher protein diet, if you're getting that extra protein, you're not necessarily getting a whole lot of benefit out of that extra protein, and so you want to have it be clean protein. On a final note, I will add that this author, Jose Antonio, he actually did a study a while back. I actually saw it presented as an abstract a few years ago when it was just the preliminary data. But the short of it is, they did this study where they had really high protein intakes uh, with a resistance training program. And the group that was getting the really high protein intakes versus kind of just like your normal high, um, it's kind of similar to this where it was kind of like uh, say two, two uh, grams per kilogram versus like three plus, uh, I think it was like 3.3 grams per kilogram. Don't quote me, I didn't read that study recently, but you know, in the higher protein group, they consume more calories and with the resistance training program, they actually had less body fat. So that's kind of interesting. It was a smaller study. I wouldn't hang your hat on those results. I'm not telling everybody, all my clients, I'm not telling them to go have a, you know 3.3 grams per kilogram body weight protein. But I think you know there is definitely more room for research on this topic. And I also think that you know it's safe. Okay, guys, that's that's the bottom line. Having high protein, you're probably not going to mess yourself up unless you're doing stupid stuff. Just like you know, you have 8,000 calories a day, and therefore you happen to have 300 grams of protein a day. So you know, be realistic, be smart about this. That's all I have. Post your questions below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.